tour of exhibition. Now we're going to continue our agenda with session three, which highlights the topic of a green, sustainable, and smart new Indonesia capital city. For this session, our speakers are Ms. Diana Kusumastuti, Director General for Human Settlements, Ministry of Public Housing and Works of the Republic of Indonesia. Mr. Mohamed Ali Barawi, Head of Technological Transformation and Innovation in Transitional Team, Nusantara Authority of the New Capital City. And Mr. Dani Sidayat Sumadilaga, Head of Task Force of Infrastructure Development and Implementation in New Capital City, Nusantara. With moderator, Ms. Sarah Al Hadi, presenter of CNA. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our speakers and moderator to the stage.
IKN ya, Nusantara will be uh, will use for public transport. Ya. Compare to other city in Indonesia starting the development of the IKN from start allow us to create a more walkable and pedestrian friendly environment. Nusantara has one uh, key act to create a 10 minute city. Ya. It's uh, a practice based the urban design which Ministry of Public Works has released the government for IPP, we call it uh, as a compact city which allow people to move from the place to another place or transport mode yeah, within the city just under 10 minutes. Then the last transformation, transformation nature. Yeah. This is uh, one way to develop a city, this is a harmony with nature. Thank you, sir. Like I mentioned by Dr. Diane, uh, first of all, why I, uh, the new capital city, or later I call it as the IKN is important to us. I mean, could you imagine we have about 270 million people in Indonesia, which make it one of the most populated countries in the world, in which 140 million is in productive ways. So we think that by having this uh, economic generator by building the ITN will boosting the economic growth of, of Indonesia. The ITN itself has a, a nine economic generator and six economic clusters spun from a renewable energy to healthcare a facility, even in high industry so on and so forth. So this is our plan. So what are the status now? First we are currently doing one MPP, what we call it is one MPP, one map, one plan, and one policy. Since two previously, all the work has been done by a ministerial uh, level, in which now we are coordinating, collaborating, and then communicating each other into one map policy. And second, for sure, in the second semester of this year, the logistic access as well as uh, uh, all related to the infrastructure road will be built. And then we do hope by 2022, early of 2023, the development will be upscale that we have targeted for ITN to start its work massively. Could you imagine what we focus for uh, next year? Up to 200 workers will work at IT. That's the status.
pass proclaiming law, and then we have government regulation, and we have also uh, presidential decree, especially uh, government regulation in terms of financial, financial. As also mentioned by Sri Mulyani, we also need to take a fight considering about the incentive. The environment uh, assured by the Uh, we are talking about the possibility of the future 
pharmaceutical uh, pharmacy, and then also sustainable agricultural industry, and ecotourism and wellness, and also chemical uh, handling. That is the possibility, and also the low carbon uh, disruptive, low carbon uh, energy, and also supported by uh, we support by the development uh, of uh, university to support the people, provide the people, and also uh, like uh, smart city and uh, industry for retail. That is to support the industry. So there is a first stage uh, investment, like uh, for basic infrastructure, as I mentioned, also sanitation, basketball, also education. But there is also a second stage, We are not moving the capital city. We starting to build the industry in the center, uh, in the center of the city. That is the basic. Uh, mentioned earlier, I want to get your take, Pastor Dennis, because about how this project will be a template for national development. It is not just confined to Borneo, but to other places in Indonesia, but potentially in the future. So how? What Super interactive in 
IKM will be driving force of the new economy generated in Indonesia as well as Southeast Asia. So let me close by saying that IKM Nusantara is open for everyone. Investors, manufacturers, researchers, supporters of innovation to develop the ecosystem and to provide a smart infrastructure, smart city, which is great, inclusive, and uh, smart. So there are ample opportunities to invest, to set up units and run business among others. So we will we will come in cutting edge technology to be nurtured and to grow. And I can assure you that I can Santara will be the best place to for you to that who think beyond the limits. It's time for us to work together. Thank you so much.
Thank you, speakers and moderator for session three. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you're enjoying our discussion today. And to keep our discussion run smoothly, may I remind you once again to please kindly switch off your phone or switch it to silent mode. And should you need to take a call, please kindly do so outside this room. Thank you very much. And now we will commence our session four in Indonesia Singapore Business Forum to discuss about harnessing digitalization for sustainable economic development. Thus, we would like to invite His Excellency, Mr. Perry Wardio, Governor of Bank Indonesia, to deliver his keynote speech. Please give a round of applause to His Excellency, Mr. Perry Wardio. visit them. 
to open my banking services. But now, any millennial youngster can do the banking service everywhere. Thanks to our fellow banks, digital banking. Just look at the number. Very fast growing electronic money, payment system, digitalization. Digitalization in Indonesia. You want to bring to Asia, you don't bring to the world. Next slide. Why we have a fast growing digitalization? Clarity of vision, strategy, and program. In Bangsa, August 29, 10 months before COVID, we already deliver our vision of digitalization of payment system. We want to integrate the ecosystem of national economy and financial digital. We want to bring banking to be digitalized and then they already progressing. We want to do the interlink between digital banking, fintech, and e-commerce. Vision number three, to build ecosystem, to build the unicorn, the hexagon of Indonesia. And we promote innovation as well as risk mitigation. And now we are already starting to have cross-border payment connectivity in Asia. I will meet with five governors tomorrow to bring along ASEAN payment connectivity. This is the sustainable economic development through digital, through a digital economic and financial inclusion. Indonesia is fast growing retail market size matter. Next slide, please. This is not only vision, it's not a strategy, but program, concrete action. We already have five working group and already progressing. We already standardized all of the QR and other open API standardization. Working group number one. Working group number two, we already reform our payment infrastructure. Last December, we introduced fast payment. Soon will be fast payment connectivity of the last year. We will also reform our real-time cross data. Also, we are building electronic trading platform, central counterparty, we are building payment system and financial market to be integrated, interoperability and interconnection. Data. We are in the process of building data integration, but last but not least, I already reform regulatory. In this payment system regulatory are really reform, fast, growing, open, clear, as well as also to be consolidated in industry. How approach to be with industry? How approach to build national payment industry? And for the people. I will not go into the detail number, the number, the fast, already number, payment system, uh, performance of the QR, of the, all of the transactions of the digital payment services. Next slide. QR standard. 18.5 million our merchant and user already connect to the national platform. Well, 18 million is a big number, but still small, because we have SMP 65 million to be connected. Fast growing QR, and will be soon connectivity QR among the ASEAN, especially ASEAN 5. But also, this is where digital is all about. QR is, of course, the first standard that we have to introduce to connect our retail market, the, and look, the, the sizable retail market in Indonesia to be digital. That's why we start with the QR. And now, already growing. Next slide. Last. December, I do fast payment. A bit late among us, but we are now ready to be connected. Our fast payment. 52 participants. Banking and payment 
company already joining 24 7 real time, very low cost, 2,500 rupiah per transaction, now already introduced. Last Ramadan, 10 days, this fast payment is game changer. Because everywhere we go, we do not need cash. We just need our cell phone. With the QR, with fast payment, 24-7, never sleep. Even in the weekend, even in the night. And this is already fast growing. Now, it's credit transfer, but we will expand all the service of payment through the fast payment. This is fast growing. Next slide, please. One language for payment seven services. National standard open API for payment services. We already built with the industry, already agree with the industry. About 40 to 2 payment services now with one lane. National standard of open API payment, the SNAP. This is what we are building to be interconnected, interoperability, inter integrated all of the payment system. This is with the, we are also now integrating our fast payment, real time gross, uh, gross income, national payment gateway to be interconnected. All of the infrastructure will be interconnected, interoperable, and also integrated through standard national of, of open EMI. All of the service, payment services with one language. National standard for open API to be integrated, interoperability, as well as also interconnectivity. Next slide. This is where we are settling for the country and the, for the people, which is sustainable economic development, which is national economic and financial inclusion. Our digital payment system that we build with the industry already surfacing. The transferring of social program, not cash, but through electronic means. The transaction of local and central government now through electronic education. Education, all of the program by the government through digitalization. This is the we build from the central bank and the industry for the country and for the people. Indonesia, sizable market, retail market, which is need to be bring along to support the economic recovery and future economy which is based on sizable market. Next slide. We will not stop here. We cannot stop only in this. But we want to show to the global, not only in this, but also ASEAN to the global, to be digitalized. This is why one of the Six priority agenda and the three tenth final strike is digital payment era. This is one of the we already cooperated with the IMF and Financial Supervisory Board, Bank for International Settlement to bring digital payment. There is global initiative for cross border payment system in the global under FSP cross border payment committee. We are focusing that we will be showing, showcasing to the global ASEAN payment connectivity to the global. There is also initiative in the global agenda, not only cross-border payment system, but also how the regulatory and monitoring framework for crypto asset. And of course, central bank digital currency. This is the initiative that we are under presidential G20 to the one. Asian Parliament Connectivity, CBDC, Crypto Asset. Next slide. But we're not only talking. We're working very hard on the integrating Asian Payment Connectivity. There is initiative under ASEAN Payment Connectivity in the cross-border QRs, in the cross-border fast payment, on the cross-border open payment 
services on the cross border real time cross settlement as well as also on data i will be talking with my fellow partners of the asean to unite asian border connectivity to the global to achieve sustainable economic development last slide keep it the way let's do digital indonesia digitalized singapore digitalized asean digitalized second president joko widodo reform one of the key visit digitalized indonesia to the world and last but not least GDNG and ASEAN connectivity. In closing, give me about 30 minutes. All of you, I want you to open yourself. Please now. Open yourself. Open yourself. Please. Open your cell phone and look at mm, the month of July. On the 11th to 16th of July, Ambassador. Do you have engagement at 11 and 16? If you have not, cancel it, all of them. <laughs> Please do. Give me 20 seconds. Please cancel all of the engagement between 11 and 16 July. And replace them G20 body. Because I we will run into event. First, the formal meeting of the third minister and governor meeting in Bali, and the whole week of business side event on the digital, on the sustainable economic development, on the macroeconomic and the financial sector. So, don't forget, cancel of your engagement between 11 and 16, and we go direct invite you to the land of Bali to show the world how ASEAN coming together to the globe. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, to discuss further about harnessing digitalization for sustainable economic development, in session five, we are very excited to have four prominent speakers. They are Mr. Gang Ye, Group Chief Operating Officer of C Group, Mr. Kusumo Matanto, CEO of Blibli.com, Mr. George Hendrata, CEO of Ticket.com, and Mr. Fok Wai Hong, Deputy Head, Technology and Consumer, Deputy Head, Southeast Asia of Temasek. And to moderate this discussion, we will have Mr. Vikram Khanna, Associate Editor of The Straight Times. Please welcome our speakers and moderator for session five. Okay, uh, hello everybody. Uh, it is my privilege to be able to moderate this session on digitization in Southeast Asia involving SMEs. I think we just heard from, I should take off my mask, sorry. <laughs> we just heard from uh, Governor Vargio 
the big picture of how digitization is transforming the financial sector in Indonesia. And I think we'll now extend the discussion to talk about how it is transforming corporate life and consumer life as well. Um, it is definitely reshaping the region, uh, opening up huge opportunities for millions and millions of people, especially the young. Uh, I, think the, I think the pandemic has accelerated digitization. In just one year after the pandemic, something like 60 million new consumers, new digital consumers, have come online uh, in, in the Southeast Asia. Its digitization is also a major growth engine for SMEs, which make up about 95, more than 95 percent of all businesses in the region. And it has also been a lifeline for many of them. One out of three SMEs say they would not have survived COVID-19 without digitization. And it looks like the future is going to be pretty bright. Uh, a research study by Bain and Company, Google, and Temasek, the latest report on the digital economy in Southeast Asia, projects that the, the size of this economy will grow from 170 billion in 2021, it will more than double to 360 billion by 2025, and then grow exponentially to about $1 trillion. This is all US dollars, by the way. One trillion US dollars by 2030. Uh, but it's not all sunshine and roses. I mean, there are issues uh, and challenges that need to be tackled. One thing, digitization is uneven. Although consumers, consumer benefits are widespread, I think the, a lot of SMEs still face a lot of barriers, including weak digital infrastructure in many, many places. There's skill shortages, there's limited digital literacy, and there is not total financial inclusion. As the governor mentioned in his speech, there's still 65 million SMEs that still need to be connected. In fact, about half of all SMEs are still in the early stages of their digitization journeys. But this is both a problem and an opportunity. Anyway, to discuss more about what's happening, we are privileged to have four people who are actual participants, actually deep in the thick of the digital economy. They are practitioners. And uh, I think we, we, we I'll just introduce them very briefly. There's Pia Gang, who is the uh, co founder of C Limited. Actually, it's not an SME anymore, it's one of Singapore's largest companies, as far as I know. Uh, there's uh, Kusumo Hartando, who is CEO and co-founder of Tribuni. There's George uh, Hendrata, who is CEO of Ticket.com. And there's Fok Wai Hung, who is Temasek's deputy head for Southeast Asia. So, welcome to the panel, gentlemen. If you can just begin just by you briefly describing what your company is doing, just to familiarize people. So, Mr. Yoga, you could just tell us about C and what your activities are. Sure, sure. Thanks, Mr. Uh, and uh, very, to be very uh, honored to be uh, uh, a uh, fellow panel uh, for this uh, discussion. Uh, I come from C. C actually stands for Southeast Asia, where is our home. Yeah, so that's uh, actually the meaning of our company name. And uh, we are a homegrown company uh, in Southeast Asia, and we are in the uh, internet business. We have three main lines of business. The first one is uh, uh, online uh, digital entertainment business arena, and the second business uh, is the one that uh, people most uh, most familiar with, uh, Shopee, which is uh, an e-commerce platform. I think uh, we played uh, quite an important role in this uh, pandemic. And our third business uh, uh, payment and uh, digital banking business, uh, C Money, which uh, under the supervision uh, of OJK, so uh, Bank Indonesia, uh, Barbaria. Listen very uh, 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 intently on the on the Barbaris speech just now, and uh, we are the we are the part of the digital financial inclusion initiative. Thanks. Yes, uh, thank you to be here. It's, it's our honor. So. To 
completely started as the uh, e-commerce uh, in Indonesia in 2011, and now uh, we've grown to become an omni-channel ecosystem with not only e-commerce uh, through Bibli, but also uh, with my peers here. Uh, again, on the uh, travel, uh, we also run and operate uh, both online and as well as uh, offline uh, retail stores, collaborating with Yeah, during the, uh, the pandemic, I think the uh, it's digitalizations of the SME uh, we have seen quite rapidly, and we are glad to be to be part of the uh, Indonesian development for uh, SME. Thank you, George. Hi, Vikram. Thanks for having me here today. Hi, everyone. Good morning. So, Ticket wants to be the most loved travel and lifestyle app in Indonesia. So, we try to make it seamless one-stop shop for people to find any travel product like flights, like hotels, like train. You know, you can travel by road, you can travel uh, by, by sea, you can travel on the plane, book villas or hotels, make it simple so that the grandma can use it with one hand, search, book and pay, complete it in under one minute and also to do a refund and reschedule in one minute if there's anything wrong with it. And we also want to make it broad and uh, competitive pricing also, uh, endless, so you can browse, figure out where you want to go next, take in the process. During COVID time, we are able to showcase Indonesia to more domestic users. More people are going to Labuan Bajo, Danau Toba, uh, Borobudur, Tikupang, Mandalika, where we have a GP. And, you know, there are a lot of small villa operators that we help during the time. You know, can be up to about 90,000. So we are very, very glad to be in Indonesia because it's a beautiful country. Lots of archipelago and want to invite people to come and visit and also to encourage the domestic traveler to explore more in Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. I hope you can just summarize the Masex operation <laughs> in the digital economy in Southeast Asia. Good morning, everybody. Uh, very excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, so, Vikram, you know, I think um, probably an important distinction the three gentlemen to the right of me are really practitioners. The businesses are embedded in, in the, you know, really in the, the, in the economy. Masek, as you all know, we are a participant in the, in the ecosystem, but uh, we're not uh, operators per se. We are a state-owned investment fund. And I think it's you know, uh, worthwhile mentioning it as, as long-term disciplined investors, as we look across Southeast Asia, we're constantly looking to identify strong tailwinds to uh, support our investment uh, decisions. And as you look at um, this region, uh, it's very clear that there are uh, you know, very good underlying factor demographics uh, underpinned by a growing population of young, engaged, online first users. Uh, and all this is really accelerated by um, you know, an increasing trend of, of digitalization of businesses, uh, as mentioned by the former speaker prior to this. And I think, you know, if you look across Southeast Asia, nowhere is this more apparent than Indonesia. So I think, you know, as Tomas said, we are global investors, but we are also very much Southeast Asia oriented investors. And so very excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we now have a summary of what everybody, we know what everybody does. Uh, now, if you can move on to what impact they have. So I want to know, what is the impact of your operations? In, on the industry that you're working in, or on consumers, on the whole ecosystem, and maybe even on the economy as a whole. So if you can give, me, give us a sense of what impact you have. Sure, sure, sure. I think, uh, for e-commerce and also uh, uh, digital financial services uh, uh, business, I think we had a very big impact, good impact, particularly the pandemic in the countries like the new And the new we actually created a lot of new opportunities. Not the SMEs, the companies here, the big companies, even the companies. George, some of the challenges that you have, <laughs> you are dealing with right now. Although I know you're flying after the pandemic is gone, but you must have some challenges. I mean, the recovery is a big, uh, it's a big, uh, it's a big relief one, but I would say it's a, both a challenge and opportunity. Because you have a lot of small operators, big parts, with tour operators that are not digitized yet. So I second uh, Mateo's point about digitizing Indonesia. Help them to be on board, that's always a big challenge. 
make the app as, as simple to use as possible for the merchant to get on board. And then Calum is a big thing, but I guess working from home and now we're working hybridly helps a lot because we can get talent from everywhere. We are, we are getting the, the training that we need locally as well to beef up uh, so we can have more numbers of skilled engineers uh, that are ready to basically to scale up because you know as you have seen in today's talk, it is only the beginning for Indonesia. There's a lot of law to grow. Thanks, Mr. Thank you. Uh, Michael, uh, what sort of obstacles do you face in choosing investments or making investments? Uh, in, in Southeast Asia, especially in Indonesia. Yeah, so maybe I'll your first question, which is, you know, like, what are the, the, the challenges the digital economy across Southeast Asia and Indonesia um, faces? And I guess I'll start with a couple of years ago, um, we started uh, writing a Google Tomasi report. Uh, there were really six key barriers, or enablers if you want to call them, if you want to take it. I like the way you position it as uh, uh, the framework of, of challenges, but opportunities. The so six main ones that, that we had identified. You know, five of those, quite frankly, we've seen really good progress on the last couple of years, and those five being uh, payments, consumer trust, uh, digital infrastructure, uh, logistics, and, um, uh, and funding. Now, having said that, the sixth one, which I think was touched on earlier as well, talent continues to be a major challenge. And there, you know, once again, I think you know, that's really a challenge for all of us to band together, pull together. I really enjoy hearing what Yegon is doing. Um, to really focus on reskilling and upskilling our labor population uh, to be ready and to participate in the internet economy. Now, looking forward, there are probably three others, and I'll, I'll, I'll mention that as we think about what can really help supercharge the digital economy going forward. Uh, number one, ESG. So, thinking about uh, and, and establishing the, the right um, metrics to track and a consistent way for us to, to track and report. Uh, and monitor ESG and sustainability, um, digital inclusion, once again, sort of promoting digital literacy, literacy across the board, um, and the third being data infrastructure and regulation, uh, whether that's, that's uh, privacy regulation, uh, uh, cross-border uh, uh, data infrastructure. Yeah, companies here, big companies, even big companies. Yeah. George, some of the challenges that you have, <laughs> you are dealing with right now. Although I know you're flying after the pandemic is gone, but you must have some challenges. I mean, the recovery is a big, uh, it's a big, uh, it's a big relief one, but I would say it's a, both a challenge and opportunity. Because you have a lot of small operators, big parks, with tour operators that are not digitized yet. So I second uh, my point about digitizing Indonesia. How them to be on board, that's always a big challenge. Make the app as, as simple to use as possible for the merchant to get on board. And then talent is a big thing, but I guess working from home and now we're working hybridly helps a lot because we can get talent from everywhere. We are, we are getting the, the training that we need locally as well to beef up uh, so we can have more numbers of skilled engineers uh, that are ready to basically to scale up because, you know, as you have seen in today's talk, it is only the beginning for Indonesia. There's a lot of law to grow. Thanks, Mr. Thank you. Uh, Michael, uh, what sort of obstacles do you face in choosing investments or making investments uh, in, in, in Southeast Asia, especially in Indonesia? Yeah, so maybe, maybe I'll answer your first question, which is you know, like, what are the, the, the challenges the digital economy across Southeast Asia and Indonesia uh, faces? And I guess I'll start with a couple of years ago. Um, we started uh, writing a Google Tomasi report. Uh, there were really six key barriers, or enablers if you want to call them, if you want to take it. I like the way you position it as uh, uh, the framework of, of challenges but opportunities. The so six main ones that, that we had identified. You know, five of those, quite frankly, we've seen really good progress on the last couple of years. And those five being uh, payments, consumer trust, uh, digital infrastructure, uh, logistics, and, um, uh, and funding. Now, having said that, the sixth one, which I think was touched on earlier as well, talent continues to be a major challenge. And there, you know, once again, I think you know, that's really a challenge for all of us to band together, pull together. I really enjoy hearing what Yegon is doing uh, uh, with, with uh, Shopee Labs. Um, to really focus on reskilling and upskilling our labor population uh, to be ready and to participate in the internet economy. 
Now looking forward, there are probably three others and I'll, I'll, I'll mention that as we think about what can really help supercharge the digital economy going forward. Uh, number one, ESG. So thinking about um, and, and establishing the, the right um, metrics to track and a consistent way for us to, to track and report uh, and monitor ESG and sustainability. Um, digital inclusion, once again, sort of promoting digital literacy, literacy across the board. Um, and the third being data infrastructure and regulation, uh, whether that's, that's uh, privacy regulation, uh, uh, cross-border uh, uh, data and digital trade agreements, I think all are quite, quite critical to uh, promoting the, the digital economy in, the, in Southeast Asia and certainly in Indonesia. Thank you. I mean, I have a ton of more questions, but uh, the timer has unfortunately gone from green to red. It's happened a while ago. So I'm afraid I, I have to wrap it up. But not before I thank our panelists for a very informative and stimulating discussion. And thank you for listening. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone.